welcome to Identifree. Hey, ladies. Hey. Wow. So, how many new girls do we have here? Two new girls. All right. So, I just want to tell you guys what Identifree means because the reason that I come here is because I came through here in 2008. And for me, it took a while for the concept of grace to go from my head to my heart. And I felt like I needed to earn my place with God because you know how they say you need to get a sponsor, work a step, get a home group, a service commitment, all these things that we do in the 12th step. And they said that I had to do that to stay sober. But as a believer, when I choose Jesus Christ as my higher power in the second step, I am identified by the adoption into the sonship with Jesus Christ when I accept him into my heart. And I'm freed by the grace that he gave me when he died on the cross. He took all sin, sickness, death, everything on him so I don't have to carry it anymore. And so I just come here so you ladies don't have to walk through that, that you really understand the concept of grace, that God loves you no matter what. Amen? Amen. So let's stand to our feet and let's worship the God who saved us, ladies.
worship you. We praise you. We honor you in this place. God, we bind the spirit of bondage over every one of these ladies that have come here today. We bind every lying and deceptive spirit, and we command them to go right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare that you're a good father, that all the lies that the enemy have spoken over us, God, we command them to be silenced right now in the name of Jesus. We break every word curse over these ladies, and we pray for healing over their hearts. God, that you would tear down the walls around their hearts so that you can come in, because you're a good, good father.
hurt so bad by men that we don't see God as a, as a good father. We see him through the eyes of what we've experienced in life. And so, ladies, when we come here, I pray that each one of you gets healed from all of those traumatic experiences. And you know what? Our breakthrough happens in our worship. It happens in our worship. Do you know that in all of the major battles in, in the Bible, they sent the worshipers out first? And they're the ones who, just a cry, would make the enemy flee, ladies. So just a war cry. So when we worship, ladies, we're breaking through the atmosphere. So ladies, I'd like each one of you to stand to your feet. Stop what you're doing right now and take some time to glorify God. Can you please take some time out of your day to glorify God, ladies?
worship you, we praise you. As long as we are breathing, we are going to worship you, God, and we worship you in everything that we do. Daddy God, we stand before you and we thank you for the lives of these ladies. I thank you that each one is sitting here today sober. I thank you for a second chance. God, I pray for restoration over these ladies. I pray for reconciliation with their families, with their children. Daddy God, I decree freedom in the lives of these ladies in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So tonight, ladies, and thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your beautiful voice. Thank you. Thank you so much. Tonight we have an awesome man of God here. His name is Nelson Schumann. He is he has a deliverance ministry and he travels the world and he took time out of his schedule to come here for us ladies. So wow, um, I am really excited that he's here. I've heard so much about him and I um, just want to get him up here and going. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. You know what? I've been in Arizona for a couple of weeks, and I've noticed that I get thirsty. So I'm going to have to drink some water here before I get started. Because my tongue is all dry. All right. Uh, so we basically have about 40 minutes, and I'm going to open up in prayer and uh, get right into this. So thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. And again, we just take authority. We just bind and rebuke all enemy interference on everyone watching, on everyone here in Jesus' name. We declare right now, enemy, silence your voice in Jesus' name. Let the Holy Spirit flow and charge the angels to surround us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so I um, have uh, no home. I have no apartment. I have no place to call my home. I travel throughout the United States and Canada, and I've done ministry to people all over the world. And the Lord has called me into a ministry that is amazing, but yet it's very, very hard, very challenging, uh, because I'm dealing with uh, the root issue of why people are getting hurt by their fathers, by their mothers, by sexual violations, and getting them set free from that so that they can actually not be tormented anymore by the enemy in their thoughts, of being able to have peace. You know, it's one of the big things I've seen all throughout the world is it doesn't matter how much money or how little money that you have, if you don't have peace, you don't have anything, you don't have a life. And so the Lord has been revealing to me since uh, back in 2015 what the root issues are for these relationship issues that we all tend to have. You know, it's, it's very uh, challenging when you have a father or mother that don't love you the way that they should. And that can set you up for a lot of heartache the rest of your life. And so what the Lord has been doing is helping me lead people through these prayers where you take authority in Jesus' name to take back what the enemy has stolen from you. And it's amazing because there's so many people that have given me testimony saying, Oh my gosh, I have a clear mind. I don't hear those voices anymore from the enemy telling me that I'm worthless, telling me that I'm a piece of crap, telling me all these things maybe that my dad or my mom or others have told me when I was growing up. You know, even people in the church, a lot of people in the church are struggling with these spirits. A lot of leaders, a lot of pastors, pastors' wives, they don't want to admit it, but they are. Um, in fact, this is a, a new revelation the Lord showed me about four weeks ago. He said, what percentage of people that have non -got, not gone through deliverance do you think, uh, he said, what what amount of thoughts do they have a day? And I was like, I don't know, maybe a couple thousand thoughts a day. And I looked it up, and the National Science Foundation said 50 to 80 thousand thoughts per day is what the average person has. And of those 50 to 80 thousand thoughts, 80 percent are negative, and 95 percent are repetitive. So, what I've seen results-wise is when people have gone through this deliverance program is instead of hearing all these voices from the enemy, tormenting them, causing them to not to get peace, being angry, taking offense, is instead of hearing all this stuff from the enemy, now they don't hear that. You now they hear themselves, their own thoughts, or they hear the thoughts from the Holy Spirit of the Lord. So they have a lot of peace. And there's so many that are getting uh, their marriages saved. Instead of going through divorce, they're staying married, or they're getting remarried. I'm gonna actually be interviewing a couple in July that's from Las Vegas that they went through a divorce, the husband then went through deliverance, and now they're getting remarried. So it's a beautiful thing, and we're seeing people get healed of things, because what I've learned, especially with women, 
if you are in a relationship with a man and the man is being really controlling and manipulative and hurting you, is you can't take it forever. You will start to feel the effects in your body. You'll start to feel, you know, your heart will start having some pains. Your, um, you can get sickness, you can get diseases. I've seen this throughout the world. I've seen multi-millionaires wives get sick and get uh, to where they had to end up separating to get away from the husbands who were spewing forth a lot of anger and hatred. And the husbands were only doing it because they grew up with father wounds or mother wounds or sexual violations. So how it works, the Lord showed me, is when we're growing up, let's say our dad or our mom is normally how the first pain starts to come in. It could be stepfather, stepmother, it could be a pastor that hurt us. You know, we've had a lot of you know, pastors and priests that we know of that have sexually molested, you know, boys and girls. Um, but let's say that your father or mother did not love you the way that they should. So what happens is as you're growing up, you have thoughts. We all have thoughts. But a lot of the thoughts are planted by the enemy. The second Corinthians chapter 10, 3 through 6 talks about that our battle is not with flesh and blood, but, you know, with the principalities. And so it says we're supposed to take every thought captive. And it's hard to take the thought captive when you get a lot, you know, 50 to 80,000 thoughts a day from the enemy. And what will happen is you oftentimes replay those thoughts from your father or your mother or your stepfather, stepmother. You hear them in your mind because the, the demonic spirits are speaking to you and you're hearing it. You know, and I didn't want to think that I'd ever had a demonic thought, but then I started to have paying attention to my thoughts in 2009. And I started realizing that, huh, I'm having some thoughts that I don't think are mine. I think these are from the enemy. And I didn't think the enemy was, you know, I didn't think it was possible for a Christian to have a demon. But now I'm learning, yes, it is. You know, most Christians, all Christians, are hearing the voice of the enemy until they've gone through deliverance. And deliverance is nothing more than this. Because when I grew up, my grandmother did it, and she was kind of weird. And I'm like, I'm not going to do this because I don't want to be weird. You know, I used to work for Intuit. I used to work for Corporate America. And then I had a, a family member that was... Uh, sexually shown some things he shouldn't have been and it messed him up for 10 years until I learned about taking authority in Jesus name and commanding the enemy to go and as soon as I did he changed from night you know in, in fact can you show that there's a before and after picture of my son before he got delivered he was 18 years of age 10 years of hell that I went through with him he went through counseling and nothing worked so you can see on the front yeah. Okay, so this is the before picture of my son. And you can see in the eyes, the Lord showed me the eyes are the window to a person's soul. So if a person's being tormented, they can't hide the eyes. And you can see uh, in the picture there that the eyes look very depressed, very sad. You know, and he, he was hearing voices from the enemy. I didn't know it. I just knew the behavior that he had was really not good for 10 straight years. And then when he got delivered, he looked like that. And that's a picture of his daughter. And, and all it took was 30 second prayer. I couldn't believe it. I was taught this like one day and the next day I implemented it. I asked him if I could pray and I said, he said yes. And I just said, okay, I command every spirit not from the Lord to go in Jesus' name. And I release peace over your mind. I kind of looked closely to see if I could see demons flying out of him and I couldn't see him. So I'm like, well, gee, did it work? And the next day it worked because he came out of the house and asked me if he could mow the grass which he hadn't done for years, and then he wanted to get a haircut and apply for a job at Burger King, which he got hired. And so he changed, though, instantly. I could talk to him, and he wasn't hearing the voices up here anymore. He was nice to me for the first time in 10 years. And so then, after that, I'm like, I want to do this the rest of my life, because I know what it's like to deal with a person that is just not at peace at all and makes my life miserable. And the Lord said, you will. You'll teach other people that they can do this. You'll lead them through deliverance. And then they'll have their lives back. Because that's exactly what he got was his life back. And so then what the Lord showed me about deliverance, I said, you know, as you become an adult, you have a free will to choose. And the important thing to get delivered is you have to forgive people that hurt you. It's extremely critical. Because if you don't, then the enemy has the legal right to keep on tormenting you in your thoughts because you have bitterness and anger towards them. So the enemy's job is to have people hurt you as much as he can as you're growing up, and then you remember those thoughts of what dad did, of what mom did, of what stepfathers did, so, you know, pastors, whomever. And then you remember them over and over and over again. That's why 
You have 50 to 80,000 thoughts a day, of which 80% are negative and 95% are repetitive, because the enemy keeps reminding you, and you get stuck that way. And to get delivered from that, what we have to do is to look at them the way that Christ and God looks at us, is that those people that hurt us, our dads and moms and anyone else, they were hurt. That's the only reason that they would ever do anything to hurt their own children or others that would hurt you, is because those people were hurt. So when you can see it from his perspective, you can forgive them. You can say, okay, they were just hurting. They did something horrible to me, yes, and it doesn't matter whether they own up to it or not. We simply say, I choose to forgive them. And when you do that, it releases you from that bondage. And then the second thing that I said is that we have to repent for our own pride, because pride always comes upon us saying, you can't trust anybody else. You have to listen to me. All your decisions are right, and everybody else is wrong. And so as long as you keep living that way, you cannot get set free either. So those are the two main things that stop someone from getting deliverance, is forgiving people that hurt you, and then repenting for our own pride. And so that's what I'm going to do tonight, is to take us through prayers. And, they, and it's, it's basically your own heart. If your heart's intention is that you mean it with your heart, you'll get free tonight. And then all the voices and thoughts and stuff that try to remind you and haunt you will be gone. And then you can discern it when the enemy tries to whisper or speak to you. It's like, wait a minute, that's the enemy's voice. I'm not going to listen to that. I'm going to shut it down. I'm going to take authority in Jesus' name and, and command it to go. And, and we see a lot of people that will get healed from things like back pain and neck pain and insomnia when they try to sleep at night. And I don't know how many of you try to sleep at night and you keep getting woken up and, and then it kind of tries to steal your dreams so you can't have any good dreams. Or if you try to read a Christian book or a Bible, you fall asleep can't stay awake. So this describes about 90% of people in the world that struggle with this. It's like you can't have a good relationship with anyone. And what I've learned is that 90% of the world that have these relationships, you have two different people that come together in marriage. You have one person who's very controlling and dominating and prideful and arrogant and jealous and envious and not nice that then latches on to a person who's more gentle and loving and giving and doesn't like confrontations. And there's names of spirits that go with that. It's called Jezebel, which controls, manipulates, and dominates. Just like they did in the Bible, first Kings and Second Kings, Jezebel married King Ahab. And Ahab was more than he, he tolerated everything. He let her kill the prophets of the Lord. He shouldn't have done that. He should have said, No, we're not killing the prophets, that's bad. I come from a godly lineage. But he didn't do that. He tolerated that. You know, he did more evil on the side of the Lord than all the other kings prior, it says, because he tolerated Jezebel. He shouldn't have done all that. So, so what we're going to do is I'm going to lead you through some prayers. And all you do is, with your heart, with your whole heart, if you mean it, what will happen is you'll choose to forgive. You will release them, the enemy having any legal right to keep tormenting you. And then you'll repent for your own pride and your own sin. And then when you're done with that, we'll command it, and I'll take authority, command all these spirits, because Jezebel, Leviathan, there's a Leviathan spirit. Let me describe, describe that. Leviathan's in Job 41, and in verse 33, 34, it talks about Leviathan is king over all the children of pride. So if we have pride, we're dealing with Leviathan. And, and the symbol for that is like an alligator. Um, it talks about it being scales, and so scales are its pride. It has a lot of teeth. And it's from the water. It's like a water spirit. So you may have dreams that the Lord's trying to show you that you're dealing with pride and Leviathan in your dreams. I see a lot of people that's like, yeah, I have dreams or I have visions of that. And oftentimes snakes. Snakes normally represent Jezebel. Um, and so we're going to take authority over Jezebel and Leviathan. So I'm going to I'm going to read the characteristics real quickly so that you can. Uh, because most people in the world have all three of these spirits, Jezebel, Leviathan, and Ahab. Jezebel causes you to be anxious and fearful because normally you have these traumas that came upon you. And it reminds you of that, so that's how it comes in. It causes you to control other people because you don't trust anyone because they've let you down and they hurt you. So you want the enemy's telling you that your decisions are always the best and you can't trust anybody else. Manipulation. So oftentimes you'll manipulate other people. So you may guilt them in getting what you want by telling them, you know, maybe, you know, if you don't watch my child, you know, so I can go out to an event, then I'm going to have to leave them with a neighbor who might hurt them. So they make, they make you say things to make a person do what you want. Um, Jezebel's jealous and angry 
It's very angry when other people are happy and enjoying life. It's demanding, it causes people to be selfish, normally sexually impure and selfish. It causes people to justify the lying. Oftentimes you can spread lies about another person to get people to turn away from them, turn against them. Jezebel wants to be in, in, in charge, in power and leadership. It's uh, very intimidating and rebellious. Jezebel causes people to be suspicious of others' intentions. You don't trust anybody, so you can be paranoid. It causes you to be critical and judgmental. You know, rarely ever admit wrong or apologize. You act assured of, you, you know, you're in control, so you act assured of yourself, but you're very insecure, if the truth be known. You cannot stand to be told no, and it loves to provoke people, to get them angry. And once that person gets angry, they point the finger at them and say, look how bad that you are. It causes you to betray and not to be loyal. And you hear constant chatter in your mind, lots of arguments. And uh, oftentimes, I see it more in women, it causes a person to drive a wedge between their own children, to try to get their children to not, not like each other, and to basically only like you. It wants all the attention of the children. So oftentimes I see people when they get to their 30s and 40s, they're not talking to their siblings anymore because their mom made up things about them saying that Joey said this about you and it wasn't true. So, and there's overt and covert. You know, there's a, the, the covert version of Jezebel is more calm, more quiet. The overt will maybe throw things like glasses and knives and scar your arms and your fingernails. And then Leviathan causes a lot of pride. You know, what does pride look like? Pride is like, um, you don't lower yourself to do something. You think that everybody else has got a problem. You talk a lot about yourself, your accomplishments, um, a lot of different things that are, are prideful. Um, and it causes you, Leviathan, to twist communication in your mind. So if someone is going to implicate a decision that you make, you'll deny it. Say, I never said that. I never did that. And then the person that knows you said that and did that are like, uh, yeah, you did. Oh, no, no, I didn't. You know, and they'll just flat out and not admit it. And you're like, well, wait a minute. I know you said that yesterday. Oh, no, no, I didn't. And you're like, do I have to record you so you can see it? Because that's what you get down to. And it really makes you feel like you're going crazy when you're dealing with someone's Leviathan. Leviathan, I've learned, it wraps around the person's spine and it twists, causing people back pain and neck pain that you normally can't get healed from. You may go to the chiropractor a lot. Um, and, and then headaches and insomnia cause you to be tired when you try to read the Bible, you can't stay awake. Scoliosis, curvature of the spine, fibromyalgia, like the number one reason I've seen for fibromyalgia is it wraps around the spine and it twists the neck and it twists the nerves so it causes you pain in your body. And then if we have anybody in our lineage, in our ancestors, that we're ever in any type of secret society where they make oaths to the enemy, like Freemasons, and Scottish Rite, and Shriners, and Eastern Star for Women, then they make these oaths as they gradually move up in the different uh, degrees of Freemasons that will come down and affect their children. So that's Jezebel and Leviathan. That's one type of person. And, and we normally have all three of these. Most people have all three of these as a part of us. And then there's the Ahabs. Ahabs don't like confrontation. They would rather just give in and keep the peace. They don't like to stir things up. Jezebels love to stir things up. They want to get their way and demand it. So they end up normally targeting people that are Ahabs, that are easy targets. So Ahabs don't like confrontation. They have a hard time being a strong spiritual leader. They have a strong desire to make everybody happy. They're afraid of being rejected. They're oftentimes needy. But they're oftentimes very nice people, but they tolerate things that shouldn't be tolerated. So, when you think about it, and you, and you now can see this, basically it allow you to see that the majority of people that you know in relationships, you have one person that's very controlling, dominant, wants their way, married to somebody that's not, or they're in a distant relationship and that may not be married. So do you guys know anybody like that, that I'm describing? <laughs> kind of opens your eyes up, you know. Yes, big time. You know, in, in fact, uh, it's amazing. I, I was getting my, my teeth cleaned at a dentist uh, last week, and the dentist assistant was hearing, he asked me what I did, and I told him, 
And he's like, you're describing my dad and mom to a T. How do you know them? <laughs> <And> I'm like, <laughs> because it's like everybody to some degree is dealing with that. And he's like, well, I won't even get married because I don't want to go through what my dad and mom did. And I'm like, it goes, in fact, I think I'm a Jezebel. What you're describing describes me. And I'm like, well, at least you're being honest. But I said, oftentimes, people won't admit to this. They're like, well, I'm not that, because the spirit of pride will tell them, you don't have this. There's no way. You're not a you know, Jezebel spirit. You know, and I can say that I used to have it. I used to be, I had, I had two wives, and my first wife, I was more controlling and manipulative and jealous, you know. And so I had Jezebel. I had pride. I had Leviathan. But I, I would default more to the Ahab side of things, where I would try and get along, because my dad was an Ahab, but my mom was more of the Jezebel. She was a subtle Jezebel. And then when I had a, a second wife, the Lord, well, the Lord connected me to a woman who was really hurt by her father and mother, and she had gone through three divorces, and there were short marriages. And so I had compassion on her, because I knew that she had been hurt. Um, but I had to go through a lot of stuff, where knives were thrown at me, and glasses were thrown at me, and fingernails clawed me and all kinds of bad stuff and I couldn't tell anybody until finally I went through it and then I finally came out the other side and the Lord had me separate and and so now I'm seeing thousands of people around the world getting set free and delivered and they're getting healed from pains in their bodies and it's amazing so um, and then there's legion legion has like 6,000 demons lots of them legion what does legion do you know, legion causes us to think about all the things in the past. Discouragement, so we don't have hope, reminds us of all those negative things. So what we're going to do is we're going to take authority in Jesus' name and command all these spirits to be gone from you guys all at once. And so all I want you to do is to, like, if you can, stand up. Stand up. And so all you have to do is to mean it with your heart. That's all you have to do. And then, and then I'm going to pray and take authority in Jesus' name to kick out after we're all done. So, I'm also going to break off witchcraft curses because I've learned that a lot of times people have witchcraft curses spoken over them. And I have an anointing over that to break that stuff off too. Oh, yeah. In fact, I'm going to show you before this. I forgot. So there's uh, two women that are on my ministry team. I'm going to show you the before and after pictures of them as well. So this woman, this is her before picture, before she got delivered. She's now on my team. She actually manages other RTF deliverance people around the world. So the before picture, you can see her eyes and her eyebrows. And then the after picture with her husband. Oh, wow. Look at the peace. Look at the, it's just yes. amazing transformation. And then this is her sister before she got delivered. And then after. So it's amazing because they don't have the torment of the thoughts anymore. So they have peace, you know, and both those women went to church, you know, and both of them were doing things in the church and they didn't think they had any, you know, problems. Well, after they got delivered, they're like, I don't hear the chatter anymore in my mind. I have peace, true peace. So, so what I'm going to do is lead you through some prayers and it's going to be with your own heart and basically the, 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 the only thing that, that matters is that you choose to forgive all those occurrences. And so I'm going to pray that the Lord shows you all those that hurt you, why they did that. The only reason people ever hurt us is because they were hurt. The only reason why anyone would say something, do something to you to hurt you is because they were hurt by the enemy. You just don't know how they were hurt unless they told you. So when you can do that, you can forgive anybody. You know, and I've, I've had some things that were done against me. I know I've, you know, gone forgiven uh, people for that. So, so here we go. Just repeat after me. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I forgive. I forgive. All those that hurt me. All those that hurt me. Okay, now I'm going to pray. Holy Spirit, show them all those that hurt them and why those people hurt them. Allow them to see them from your eyes so that they can forgive them. And now I'm going to pray and have you go through this. Say, I choose to forgive. I choose to forgive. And then name the first names of all those that have hurt you. So basically say the first name. So I say, I choose to forgive, you know, 
mom, or I choose to forgive dad, I choose to forgive, and then all the individuals that have hurt you. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus.
Anyone feel different? Totally. Like, I feel <laughs> all over my body. Really? I almost fell. Really? I feel like I'm, I did. I yeah? Cool. Like, I was beautiful. Cool. I don't know. It was just like, wow. Isn't that amazing? Yes. <laughs> wow. I love no, this. No, yeah. It's never happened to me forever. Really? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. You're Thank all, you. always going to awesome. remember this. Awesome. Wow. And I'm going to leave some books here. Um, I've got uh, five books. Restored to Freedom basically is a book that goes through and explains his father wounds, mother wounds, and gets rid of Jezebel, Leviathan, and a Legion. And then Keep Your Peace On. The Lord gave me that book in four days, and it really helps people on a day-to-day -day basis to walk in peace. Because, yep. Do you go to houses? Do I go to houses? I actually have a really... Um, I do ministry in, in, in homes. Can you pray? Can you pray out people you I mean, I prayed over with people in different countries and stuff, and see the demons break off. Would you come to my house? Well, I can pray. Who, 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 who do you want me to pray for? Uh, I have, I have six beautiful children at home, uh -huh. and um, a grandbaby, and okay. um, a beautiful woman that pushed for my kids. Okay. And um. My oldest grand, my oldest daughter, and um, you know my grandmother's daughter, and her boyfriend, they fight every day at the house, which disturbs the whole house. Right. You know they're both always fighting and yep. disrespectful. You know to my mom's house. Um, second to the oldest, yep. you know she has this evil Bloody like pray. spirit. I'll pray. And let me. Uh, I'll, I'll finish this page of life. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I 